It's Apple's best up against Samsung's best. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Apple iPhone 5S up against the Samsung Galaxy S4 in this quick look. Of course, we're dealing with two different size markets here, with the iPhone 5S keeping to the original 4-inch form factor and the Samsung flagship being one of the many 5-inch screen devices available. But in terms of their pedigrees, both of these phones can be described as updated versions of their former selves. In the iPhone 5S, we get the same aluminum-clad body with the same flat profile with rounded corners. It's easy to handle in one hand as all elements are reachable from a neutral grip. Otherwise, the button layout is pretty much the same all over, with the front home button no longer concave in order to aid with its fingerprint reading. The Galaxy S4 takes on a similar trend by being pretty much the same as its predecessor in design. It does get a larger screen, but its pr footprint is the same as the Galaxy S3. Glossy plastic is Samsung's forte, and thus you get a fingerprint-prone and somewhat slippery feel. One-handed operation is definitely possible with the S4, but it is definitely pushing the boundaries on ease. Its button layout is classic Samsung, including the home button up front flanked by a couple capacitive keys. The screens really make these two devices. While the size you want will depend on your viewing desires, it's fair to say that both of these displays do well by their respective markets. The smaller Retina display is capable of 1136 by 640 resolution at 326 ppi and is adequately bright even in broad daylight. It does real justice to the newly colorful iOS 7 and media viewing is still an enjoyable experience. This display does continue the tradition of iPhone 5's display quality, so those who have used the original know what to expect here. But then you get into the larger 5-inch Super AMOLED screen of the Galaxy S4. Even if the size isn't completely for you, it's hard not to enjoy the viewing experience on a 1080p display. This uber colorful touch with UI really pops out of the screen and everything from watching videos and reading text is a joy. Ultimately, it comes down to what you want in both size and display. If you're not totally convinced of the 5-inch form factor, there are plenty of other smaller screens in the Android space, but the iPhone deserves to be called one of the easiest to use smaller devices. But there are just as many people who flock to, large, to the larger screens and the Galaxy S4 is one of the best to use and handle. In performance, both phones promised to bring greater performance in their updated packages. Whereas the Samsung Galaxy S4 took to the more powerful quad-core Snapdragon 600 clocked in at 1.9 GHz, Apple took to an updated dual-core 64-bit A7 that hopes to preempt an upcoming shift in smartphone computing. While there is no doubt that the current crop of Snapdragon processors is very fast, and the Galaxy S4 is a prime example of this, the iPhone 5S introduces one of the first processors that will handle the higher memory-demanding futures of our ecosystems. It's a change that won't seem overtly obvious to the general consumer, but expect to hear about 64-bit packages a lot in the coming year. Nonetheless, the iPhone 5S flies through its operating system and should bring good and reliable performance to its users. We are looking at two different ecosystems and thus different kinds of demands here, but nonetheless, both of these phones perform within them very well. In hardware, the iPhone's unibody design keeps it from having expandable storage or a removable battery, both things that the Galaxy S4 can boast with its removable back cover. With a slightly larger battery than before, the 5S can get a little bit extra longevity, but having a spare battery for the S4 is always a plus. Apple did add in a fingerprint scanner within the home button, and while it is a cool feature to have, I didn't feel it really added to the unlocking experience. You have to get it just right the first time, or you're just going to get delayed trying to do so. The Galaxy S4, on the other hand, added in a ton of sensors to enhance the navigation experience. Sensors for air and hand gestures are available, as well as barometers and thermometers for gauging your general surroundings. When it comes to cameras, the 5S did get a bit of a boost, but it's mostly in its new app. The 8 megapixel optics are largely the same good performer as before, but its interface has been updated into a much nicer looking and functional design. With a swipe, you can change the modes that now include a square mode or for Instagram photos, slow motion video capture, and a bunch of live filters. It's a matter of quantity for the 13 megapixel shooter in the Galaxy S4, which comes with so much from dual recording to drama and eraser modes. Picture quality can go quite head to head between these two devices, as both of these phones produce very good photos that have been well received since their predecessors. Finally, in software, the 5S brings an all-new looking iOS iteration with a flatter interface that includes translucent effects. It's overall more vibrant and much nicer to look at, especially considering how the operating system has started to show its age. It does also bring additions of the control center and the updated notification center, but overall, the general experience is still the same. This can also be said for the updated TouchWiz in the Galaxy S4, however, which brought a slew of new ways of getting around the phone, but overall looks and feels just like previous Samsung UIs. While on the one hand we see a much different looking but still familiar feeling experience, the other adds new ways of getting around but is still overall a familiar feeling experience. And so, 
There you have it. Two of the top smartphones in the market today. What we find in these two iterations is an updated version of what we might already know, and whether or not they're enough to warrant a jump is up to you. We're going to have a more in-depth comparison between these two phones soon, so stay tuned to Android Authority, your source for all things Android.